Thank you all for coming out to the uh, membership seminar for 2023 National Convention. I am so uh, excited to see you all here. Um, hello. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, everybody is enjoying themselves here in Atlantic City. Uh, we had a couple little challenges, but I think you all, being the resilient folks that you are, overcame, adapted, right? Just like we did in the military. So I really appreciate you all for being here, making this such an awesome national convention experience for both of our uh, recurring members, uh, recurring attendees, and the folks uh, that this is their first time uh, coming to a national convention. So um, <clears throat> just want to say a quick thank you. Uh, for most of you that know me, you know a couple of things about me. Uh, one, uh, that I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, right? Secondly, um, I, I was in the Marine Corps from 1996. And I'm, I'm so proud of my inner Marine, I keep it uh, encased in all this cushion so it doesn't get scratched. Um, but one, one of my great philosophies is that the way you get cool gifts is to be easy to shop for, right? And my good friend Deb from the great state of Massachusetts brought me a nice beverage. It's a pale ale drinking Korans. So I'm going to enjoy this later, so thank you, Deb. Um, Real quick, I want to take a moment to uh, introduce my uh, interim membership committee uh, for this uh, most recent membership year. Uh, they're seated to my left and right. Uh, so, of course, our chair, Matt Kempinen from Wisconsin. Uh, to his right, Johnny Walker from Minnesota. Uh, Penny uh, Brown from uh, Nevada. And uh, Shannon Sander from the great state of New York. Please give these folks a great round of applause for all the work they've done all year long. <laughs> So I just have a ton of stuff to try to get through today, an awful lot of stuff. So uh, this presentation really is gonna feel like you're drinking at the fire hose. I promise you, uh, as now is our mydav.org and uh, membership portal seminar that we did on Friday that's posted in the app. We'll make sure all the seminars are posted at dav.org as well. Uh, so feel free to, to review them. Uh, I know a lot of folks like to take pictures of different, um, of different slides and whatnot. Uh, we will share these slides, just sans the video, just because those are uh, too, um, too large to email. But these videos will be made available to you. Uh, I, I was a little uh, quick on the trigger there, but this is my direct information. Do not hesitate to email me or give me a call. That number goes right to my desk. Uh, I, I want to hear from you if you have suggestions, if you have needs. Uh, I want you to be wildly successful in all that you do on behalf of membership recruitment for DAV. Uh, and you deserve to be supported in every way possible for all the great work that you do for us every single day. So again, do not hesitate to uh, reach out. Uh, I've probably got the easiest email, I always say this, the easiest email in DAV dwells at DAV.org. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, just want to real quick touch on March Membership Madness. It was a great success again this year. Uh, again, we're just trying to get back to, to organic recruiting, but uh, the only thing, the only memberships that count on this are uh, electronic memberships. So whether you're using Recruit a Warrior or just going to DAV.org and signing somebody up, uh, all electronic mechanisms work for March Membership Madness. Uh, please, please, um, you know, especially for your department leaders out there, rally your troops in the chapters to the cause. Uh, it's a great way to remind folks to start recruiting in order to make your membership goals. We don't want people waiting until the end of May to try to make their membership goal, right? So this gets them keyed up for that a little bit sooner. And it's just a fun way to uh, instill some competition and camaraderie. You know, so we got those beautiful trophies for both the tournament champion and the MVP. Uh, but we also have, um, iPads that we try to give away to individual folks that recruit 25 or more members. So please, uh, please take advantage of that as both, uh, you know, on behalf of the department um, and that camaraderie, but also as an individual effort. So uh, this year we had uh, uh, our tournament from March 9th through March 29th, and our winner was the great state of Illinois, the land of Lincoln, and our uh, MVP was Wyoming. So let's give those two departments a, a great round of applause. Recruit a Warrior, 
Go to DAV.org, or I'm sorry, go to DAV.org slash warrior. If you haven't already done so, put in your membership number, hit return, the validate button there will uh, uh, highlight so you can verify your membership number. If it comes back, it doesn't recognize it, make sure you put it in right. If you have problems subsequent to that, give us a call uh, at headquarters and we'll get you square away. But this is the easiest way to recruit that you can possibly recruit. You can get a link that you can text folks, that you can share on your Facebook page and on your Twitter feed. Uh, we've got QR codes now that you can get. You can uh, use a specific QR code link. If you're going to DAV.org, uh, go to member resources, and scroll down, you'll see a tile that talks about uh, business cards and station area. You can use that code to have your Recruiter Warrior QR code on your business cards. Uh, it's all great stuff, really appreciate it. Uh, that was an idea that came from multiple members, so and, and we just had a lot of wild success. There's a QR code on there that you can use to add to your signature blocks and your correspondence, all sorts of stuff. So leverage that bad boy in any way that you can, and if you think of a new creative way to do it, please uh, you know share uh, because a rising tide lifts all boats, and we'll uh, help each other out. Also, just want to quickly remind you of our recruitment points. So. You know, and again, a common theme with me, you'll hear online, 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 and I know some people aren't uh, as comfortable with that, but we want to do everything we can, we can to encourage folks to sign up online. Uh, if you sign somebody up online, you can get up to three uh, recruitment points. If uh, you, you sign them up with a paper application, you only get a maximum of two. So uh, let's make sure we get folks signed up online. There's two things that happen when we do that. There is a greater proclivity for people to pay for their full life membership out of the gate if we sign them up online with a credit card. Also, if they sign up with an installment plan, then it's fire and forget, right? We don't have to send paper statements out every quarter to them. Uh, that costs uh, organizational resources, just that act alone, especially the way postage keeps going up and whatnot. Um, but the, if it's fire and forget, there's a much greater uh, potential that they will convert to full life membership. So that's what we're really ultimately looking for. You can sign folks up for as little as $10 a month right now. So um, with the Recruiter Warrior link, you can share the link on their phone. You can share the link on their phone and um, uh, you know they can put their credit card information in their own mobile device so they're not putting their credit card information on yours, okay? That's the way to do it. But these points, uh, we had to make a decision a few years back to ensure that we expire them. Any rewards program has to expire or it becomes too much of a red on the ledger, right? So uh, we expire our points on a three-year rolling basis. So once they've gone through three membership year ends, that following membership year end that we uh, prosecute at the end of the membership year, June 30, July 1, those points will then come off. So spend your points. When we redeem your points, we always do the oldest points first. Okay, so I, I hate that we sometimes uh, uh, expired points that folks didn't use. So remind all your counterparts out there, use their points. Uh, and you can go to davstore.org. There's a great catalog. You can give uh, Jesse or one of the folks in procurement a call back at headquarters and they can get you set up uh, to, to use your points. Uh, just quickly talking about goals and hot lists as a reminder. Uh, so the goal now, again, is, uh, you know, we shifted that paradigm a few years back. Uh, so instead of just using some arbitrary percentile increase for the chapter, um, now we actually try to base the goals for your chapters on a real world metric. Not every chapter is created equally when it comes to the potential for new members residing in that area. A, uh, the chapter in Colleen, Texas has a lot more low-hanging fruit, if you will, than the chapter in Eastern Rhode Island, right? So the chapter in Colleen, Texas has a much greater obligation to DAV to recruit those members. Um, so their goals are going to be higher naturally. So um, anything you can do, leverage these tools that we're sharing with you, please get out there and, and recruit. But the goals are now based on our, on our hot list. Um, you know, chapters and departments, you gotta get those from us at headquarters. Uh, we want to leverage technology to ultimately just be able to automatically distribute them to you, but for right now, just give us a call, shoot us an email at membershippublic uh, at dv.org, and my team will get that out to you right away. The only thing that you've gotta provide us is the zip codes of your jurisdiction, and we will get that hot list to you, okay? 
All right, if you were in the business session this morning, uh, you heard Rob Reynolds talking about uh, the dues increase uh, that'll come on January 1st, uh, 2024. Uh, we've got to do this. I know you feel like maybe we just uh, increased dues just a few years ago. Um, we hadn't had a dues increase prior to that for 19 years. That's not sustainable. Um, we have to do this to stabilize uh, and improve the health of the life membership fund, right? So uh, the life membership fund, for those that you who may not know, when we collect dues at headquarters, we uh, put them into the life membership fund, and then hopefully with our investments and the portfolios that are involved there, uh, those dollars will multiply and and uh, we'll be able to uh, have a, a lot of cash to send back out to the field on a per capita basis uh, so that our local leaders, you, can help us figure out where the gaps in service are in your communities because, again, every community isn't created equal when it comes to this stuff. So, um, you know, we, we definitely want to get back to full distribution. We've been on reduced distribution here for a few, year, few years now. Uh, but if we didn't do that, the life membership fund would have been depleted or would be depleted a lot sooner than, than uh, what we would have anticipated. So um, I understand it's tough. I understand, um, you know, uh, it's a difficult thing, but we've, the way to solve this is to recruit more folks. That's, one, that's the biggest single thing we can do is to get more dues into the life fund to get us back to normal operations with that. Uh, and despite the increase, we're really still the best deal in town. Uh, I've got some numbers up there from some of our counterparts, you know, even at 325, we're still going to be a great deal. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, this is a great time to recruit. Every time we've had a dues increase in my tenure, we've seen a boon in recruitment because people are trying to sign up before the price goes up, right? And they're very smart to do so. Um, also, remember, if someone signs up as a, uh, as a member uh, on installments, we will continue to honor that price. So if someone signs up for 300 bucks in December, once they pay off $300, they're a full life member, okay? Uh, there's no sliding scale there. So uh, get out there and recruit, recruit, recruit. Um, I'm gonna talk a couple, about a couple of things here um, that I went over in the mydav.org seminar. I know uh, we've got some competing um, seminars going on at that time and not everybody was able to to make it, but I just wanted to make sure I reemphasized a couple of things. Everybody should be uh, registering for mydav.org, whether you're a department officer or not. There are things that are particular to you as an individual member in mydav.org, uh, making payments on your memberships, um, requesting new membership cards, completing a transfer form, uh, also remember that the iteration of mydav.org that you see today will probably be a lot different a couple of years down the road as we continue to make enhancements, right? But uh, in order to do that, you, uh, you, need, you can see the registration link here or you can just go to dav.org on the top right of our newly designed website, which is awesome. Uh, click on uh, member resources. Scroll down past the tiles, and right there you'll see the, the registration button and the sign-in button for my uh, for mydav.org. But this uh, this registration literally takes you know a minute to fill out. It's just some basic information, um, but uh, just ensure that you're utilizing the correct membership number for those of you like me that have multiple memberships in DAV. Um, you want to you make sure you're using the one that you would potentially leverage as an officer of if, if a chapter or department if, uh, if that's a direction you were going in especially. Uh, because everything keys off of the particular membership number that you're using to register for mydav.org, okay? Um, it's a two-part registration, so you're gonna fill out that registration form and submit it. You'll get an email that looks something like this back that tells you, hey, thanks for your registration. Give us a couple few days to validate you into the system, and then you'll be ready to uh, to rock and roll, and then after that, one, two, three days, depending on uh, when you uh, when you uh, filled out the registration, uh, you'll get another confirmation email saying, "Okay, now you're ready to to get busy in, in the system." And then you'll use the username and password that you created when you registered uh, to sign in and, and gain access to uh, to all the information uh, that you could possibly want. <clears throat> um, 
Again, I'm not going to go into detail on, on every one of these tiles, but you got a lot of different information uh, that you can have access to just as a, as a basic member, uh, including updating your service record to make sure we got all of that information appropriate, uh, changing addresses, whatever you got to do. But the, the kind of the two important tiles to officers uh, are the report repository um, and what I'm going to talk about here in a minute, the officer election report tile. But uh, real quick, just an update on the report repository. Um, again, my DAV is roles based. So things will open up and then close down for you. They'll, they'll be on the screen or not, depending on your role within the organization. Um, the report repository, again, is one of them. So it's only accessible by department and chapter officers. So think about the classic uh, officer election report, everybody on the left side of the report, uh, and the officer authorized to receive them. Those are the folks that have access to the report repository. This is completely up to date now. Every single report, uh, plus some, that you had access to in the legacy membership system, you now have access to through mydav.org. Uh, a report you didn't have was the historical population summary. So if you want to know, okay, where did we start with goal for this membership year, you want to pull up the historical population summary for January, or pardon me, for July 1, that's the beginning of the membership year, and you can see what your goal is. Then you can run a current population summary and see uh, the difference of what you've recruited since year end, or year beginning. So um, uh, again, you know, department and chap chapter officers will see that. You can download these in what's called an Excel, but it's really just kind of a faux PDF, right? It's got nice pretty headers, it's very presentable, uh, but you can't sort those columns and whatnot, right? So um, if you wanna be able to sort columns, do things like mail merge, you wanna download it in a CSV format, um, it'll still use Excel to open it up, but it just won't have the pretty headers so that you can sort your columns and do all your stuff, separate active from inactive, whatever the case may be, depending on the uh, report that you're looking at. Um, so again, you know, all the old reports are available now, plus the historical pop sum. Um, so I'm super excited to talk about this, and hopefully you're just excited to hear about it. Uh, officer election reports are now going to be completely online. Um, so no more paper, um, you know, yeah, go ahead and applaud for that. Um, this is a, a great win for us. Um, you know, we're really starting to see uh, this technology get leveraged uh, on behalf of our membership uh, duties. Uh, it's coming to fruition, it just takes time as we've uh, sorted through our new system. Uh, and the thing I wanna re remind everybody of, and I said this the other day, the old legacy system, you could do a ton in, but it broke a lot. It was a 30-year-old platform. We had been tweaking that thing for 30 years, cajoling as much as we possibly could out of it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know the old saying, you can put a lipstick on a pig, that's where we're at with it. So it just takes time. Uh, we've been in the new system for not even two years yet, and we're already killing it. We really are. I know there's some things we still want to get out of the system, and we will. Uh, I want them just as bad as if, uh, if not as worse uh, than you all do. But uh, just a quick review of this, because I did mention it the other day. Um, essentially, uh, when you log in, if you log in as a chapter officer, you're gonna see a screen that looks like this. If you log in as a department officer, you'll see all, you can, you'll see that you'll have a drop down that shows all of your chapters in your jurisdiction. Okay, so as a department officer, you can submit reports on behalf of chapter officers. So if you've got somebody out there that's not technologically inclined, don't own a laptop, whatever, we don't wanna discourage them from being part of the process uh, just because we are going to drag DAV into the 21st century, kicking and screaming if necessary. We don't wanna leave those folks behind, but we are gonna be uh, leaning on the departments to help uh, expedite and facilitate that process, okay? So if they need to submit a, a report to you and you turn around and, and submit it on their behalf, that's great. But essentially, uh, we were able to populate all of the officer reports for all the different organizations going back 21 years. Um, so you'll be able to see all of your reports going back, uh, and that's what those views are. And then you'll see the 2022, 2023 report there on the screen. You can either revise that or view it. So the revise button I'm really excited about because now you don't have to, to send in a whole new report just to fix one thing. So if you guys vote to decide to change your meeting time, 
you can just revise that on a report, resubmit it, and you're good to go. Right? You like that, right? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> once you start a new report, uh, once you start a new report, that um, revised view will be just view from that point on while we're uh, reviewing and approving uh, the new report. So the way we're going to handle security with this, first of all, that two-step validation process into the system, right? We're going to know who it is that's submitting reports. But also, when a report is submitted by an officer, um, an email will go out to all the other officers to include the department of uh, ORM. So people will know when a report is submitted and when a report is approved. All right, so there's complete transparency there. If, uh, if a uh, chapter's whole officer corps is wiped out for some reason, everybody gets mad and resigns or, you know, we've had things like that happen. We've all seen it. Um, but uh, if something happens like that and the department comes in and gets things squared away and, and gets a, a new, line, new set of officers installed, they'll just submit that first uh, report on their behalf. Okay, uh, and then again, all those new members that are on that report will get an email saying the, the report has been submitted, the report has been approved. Everything else uh, stays the same. The, the amount of time that you have to submit reports subsequent to the installation of officers, all that stuff say, pardon me, stays the same. Uh, and you heard uh, also with uh, the reading the Constitution bylaws changes, there are some housekeeping items that they're changing to make all this kosher. Um, so the other thing, here's the organizational details uh, where you can you know, establish your, your time and place of meeting, all that good stuff. Uh, but I am also super excited about this aspect. You will never need to have somebody's membership number in order to put them on an officer report again. All you gotta do is look up their name and as you're typing in their name, the the system will let you know who in uh, on the chapter membership list matches that, and you'll select it right from there, and it'll it'll populate all of their information as appropriate. So, also what that means is we get an awful lot of reports at headquarters, the paper ones, where somebody's installed an officer of a chapter that doesn't even have a membership to that chapter. So, um, you know, it happens, and again, paper, right? So that's another reason we want to get away from that. Uh, the more human interaction there is with stuff, the more likelihood there is a mistake. So you'll never be able to have to worry about submitting somebody erroneously on an officer report. So, what's that? Hand up. Yes. So, and I only let you interrupt my seminar because you bought me this tasty breakfast. She was just she she was just asking if the adjutant would be able to make corrections, and the answer is yes. Um, so yeah, super excited about officer, officer election reports. Uh, when we get back home, uh, my IT folks should let me know that we're ready to uh, to roll that out. Uh, as soon as that happens, I will send out an email to our, all of our department uh, commanders and adjutants, letting them know that that has now occurred. Um, and hopefully, uh, everybody gets that, receives that information with great uh, joy uh, and doesn't hesitate to call me if they have any questions or concerns. I am certain that I'm going to get an awful lot of phone calls when that first happens. Uh, and I am willing to take any phone call, um, you know, that you got, any question that you guys have, except I want to use paper. So that's the only one I don't want to hear. <laughs> Um, so, some other exciting news. I had hoped to have some working uh, examples of this, but who here, uh, by a raise of hands, uses DAV's membership portals? Still a good number, okay. Um, hopefully, this time next year, when I say who is using DAV's department and chapter websites, just about every hand will go up. We are redesigning, finally, uh, the technology is there, the uh, uh, bandwidth is there for us to finally re, um, reignite our uh, online presence with DAV department and chapter websites. 
So this is gonna be uh, what the main landing page looks like. Uh, if you see it at the bottom left, you'll click on that. Um, use a couple of different ways to search for a local, for the department or a local chapter. Uh, and it'll take, take you directly to their, uh, to their webpage. Um, you'll, the department will, as will National, have the ability to disseminate information through the websites um, and, uh, um, you know, push information out to the field. So this will be another avenue through which we're sharing information. Local chapters will have way more capabilities ultimately than what you have with the, uh, with the membership portals currently. And uh, they will look modern and sleek and you'll have some options to uh, choose the, the, the look and feel of your website. But uh, uh, we're just super excited about this. And again, I'm sorry I don't have a working, um, uh, working example for you, but um, these are just over the horizon. I'm hoping uh, a, at most a couple few months away. So uh, super excited about this. Now, I'm really excited about this. You know, you've heard a consistent uh, conversation piece. You heard um, National Executive Director of uh, uh, National, or pardon me, Executive Director of National Headquarters, Cody Van Boxel, in his remarks today, talk about the crucial necessity for us to reinvigorate our recruitment uh, efforts. And uh, the Interim Membership Committee, uh, for two years, has been working on this. So I also want to thank um, our last iteration of the Interim Membership Committee. They did yeoman's work on this as well. Uh, we had some things kind of artificially get in our way, uh, our redesign of our website and some other stuff we had to wait uh, to make happen because uh, we wanted to make sure that the links are pointed in the right place, right? Um, and that, that website redesign is just amazing. If you see people from our communications team, please thank them for that. That just really pluses up our, our professionalism and the look and feel of the EAV. But uh, with respect to the, to the member recruiting resource, what this is, it's, it's your one-stop shop for everything that you need to recruit a new member. The, the toughest part of recruiting for most people, I think, and I've been doing this for almost 28 years now, is starting the conversation, right? Um, a lot of you are uh, CSOs, DSOs in areas, um, you know, that you encounter a lot of, a lot of folks that are eligible for membership. Um, and so maybe it's a little easier for you, but for our average, uh, you know, grassroots folks, it can be tough to answer some of these tough questions that people uh, have today when you're trying to recruit them into an organization like DAV. Back in the day, there was the sense that it's a sacred obligation for you to be a member of DAV, and I still feel that it is. But current uh, younger generations, uh, we have to make them understand the value of DAV membership and how it protects them uh, and why we are organized the way that we are. So the idea, there's two pages here, um, and this is the digital version. I'm gonna take a moment of uh, privilege here and kind of pop out of my presentation. So um, we'll have this organized on DAV.org, and we'll also have instructions to you that shows you how to add this to the home page of your iPhone or your Droid device so that this information will be one click of a way uh, one click away um, when you encounter somebody that's eligible for membership. Uh, when I was a young NSO, uh, Ken Wolf, the former National Service Director, pounded into us that we should always have a membership application on us uh, wherever we're at. Uh, if we're on vacation somewhere, you should have a couple applications in the trunk of your car, right? Well, now here in the digital age, it's possible that you always have an application on you, whether it's recruit a warrior or whatever the case may be. Uh, but this resource is totally at your finger, will be totally at your fingertips. Um, so this will hopefully be out here in uh, just a matter of a couple of weeks to you. And again, we'll send out a memo. But you can see here that you're scrolling up and down. And if somebody says, if, if somebody says, hey, why do you have, oh, it didn't change. I'm sorry. This is defeating me here, getting... Defeated by technology. Sorry, I was still in presenter view there. Um, 
Taking care of me, Kenny. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. Right. Let's try this one more time. Uh, of course, it's not working. Um, it worked earlier. Uh, so anyway, the idea is that you um, that you um, um, you'll have this resource at your fingertip and you'll be scrolling up and down and if somebody says why does DAV have membership dues okay um, you'll click on the hyperlink in the membership dues section and it will launch the membership dues video for DAV so you'll have a little blurb there that you can just articulate uh, the information to them why does DAV have membership dues and if you need further support you'll be able to launch that video so you're not struggling to answer any particular question. So what else does DAV do? We'll have information on Patriot Boot Camp and our van transportation network, all that good stuff, right? So it'll all, again, just be a click away uh, to help support you through that, that recruitment process. Plus, there will be uh, a, um, a paper companion for this. And I know I said I don't like paper, but I also know that there are some folks that struggle with technology. Uh, so there'll be a companion piece to this that will be, it'll have the same information, but instead of having the hyperlinks, uh, and it won't be as robust as the digital version, but it'll still be pretty good. Instead of having the hyperlinks, it'll have a QR code that somebody can pull out their camera, take a picture, that, or uh, hover over that uh, QR code, click the link that pops up, and it'll launch the same video. So uh, it'll be a nice recruitment resource to have uh, wherever you're traveling, um, you know, we'll continually make enhancements to it. The uh, interim membership committees last year and this did, year did amazing work on this. So please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Sorry for the technical difficulty there. My IT guy's fired. <laughs> um, it's been a minute. I've, I've gotten a lot of questions. You see, I'm wearing a Warriors Club shirt here, uh, and it's been a minute since uh, I've talked about this directly uh, as part of a, a seminar, just because we've had so much other stuff that we've had to cover. But um, the Warriors Club was rolled out a few years ago, and it is an exclusive um, opportunity for DAV's full life members. We did some analysis uh, back when we were looking at this, and you know, when you look at the data, it's clear one of the biggest groups of supporters of DAV are DAV members. Um, so we decided to offer them a specific opportunity, once you're a full life member, to donate to, to the DAV. And this still uh, you know, uh, has all the benefits of uh, what you would have if you donated to any other charity with it being tax exempt, all that good stuff. Um, but, or ta sorry, tax deductible. Um, but the big, um, the big uh, reason for this, the, the motivation here is to again, help uh, stabilize the life membership fund uh, so we can hopefully at some point in the near future rather than the distant future, get back to uh, full um, distributions. Uh, but it also helps, again, support DAV at the local level. So if you donate $21 a month, you know, rehab and counseling programs, our advanced transportation network, all of these uh, initiatives that come out of headquarters, uh, a big chunk of uh, your Warriors Club donation goes to support that. Um, and this awesome Warriors Club swag, we make it available twice a year exclusively to our Warriors Club members. Um, <clears throat> we'll send out a, a, uh, an email to those members um, a couple few months before Midwinter Conference and then a couple few months before uh, National Convention, so you have time to order your swag and get it back to you in time, in time to promenade around and make everybody jealous with this awesome uh, emblem. So hopefully uh, we can get a bunch of folks to sign up here. If you go to DAV.org uh, and again, member resources, scroll down until you see the fundraising tile, the link to join Warriors Club and make a $21 a month or more donation is there. Uh, and if you sign up here, I have a special uh, piece for you. 
Um, you can go to fundraising. So if you think about the will call desk downstairs, but here on this deck, same place, right? Um, that's where fundraising is if you sign up here or you're already a member of Warriors Club. We've got awesome Warriors Club pins for you. Uh, here's a nice gift. So I encourage all of you to, to do that. Um, and as always, I, I try to save a, a bunch of time for questions, but uh, we're kind of coming to the end here. Uh, I also did want to remind you all of our uh, member advantages. Um, you know, a couple few years ago, we would have a baker's dozen or so worth of, of uh, vendors that we um, individually negotiated deals and, and discounts for our members with. That took a lot of time, energy, and finance to do. Uh, and because of some other restrictions and being a nonprofit, it was tough to advertise for all those folks. Uh, and even though some of them were kind of throwing the kitchen sink at us, uh, we discovered that, you know, it was tough to, to really kind of zero in on uh, specific benefits that uh, our members were looking for. I mean, Identity Guard was one of our partners, and they gave us everything. They bent over backwards for us, and hardly, you know, just a handful of our members signed up. So um, it's important that we have a, a large breadth of uh, discounts and benefits for our, our members. Um, and as a member of either DAV or Auxiliary, they're both eligible for this. If you go to dav.enjoymydeals.com, you sign up with your membership number, you create a, a, a password, you use an email address, that's all you need. The, the membership number validates you into the system. Uh, and then you go out on your iPad or your telephone and you, uh, in the Droid store, in the Apple store, you look for that My Deals um, uh, app. You'll sign in with your, um, your email address and, and user, uh, username, or pardon me, uh, password that you just created, and you will have a DAV branded My Deals experience. Um, and there are literally thousands of discounted uh, opportunities in there, not just from national and regional brands, but I have discovered that they negotiate with the mom and pop pizza shop around the corner. You also have a way if you have a favorite pizza shop that's local to you or something else, you can refer them to Access, that's the company, the vendor we use for this, uh, and they will reach out to them and try to get them signed up for discounted services through my deals. So, I mean, literally thousands. If you're planning a trip to Disney World or going to Vegas or whatever, um, you know, try to try to use these. If you got to send your wifey or uh, your mom flowers or whatever it might be, use 1-800 Flowers through My Deals. Um, the the great thing about this, not every program, because it just depends on the one-on-one -on -one, uh, deals that they have. Uh, but a lot of the stuff, especially as it relates to travel, when you use the programs through My Deals on member advantages. Uh, not only are you getting a discount, but DAV is also getting, um, you know, a piece of that action so that we can further fund DAV's free programs and services. So it's a win-win-win all the way around. So please take advantage of, of member advantages. It's just our way of saying thank you for being great. Uh, I think the greatest membership base in all of, not just VSOs, but any organization. I love you all. You guys do such amazing work. Uh, and this is just our way of saying thank you for that, as well as thank you for all the hard work that you do every single day on behalf of disabled veterans and their families. So please take advantage of this. Um, I want to—I haven't shared this in a while, but I, I usually have two or three videos that I put throughout my presentation. But again, we had so much to cover today, and I want to be sure to save time for questions. But um, I just love DeWitt Jones to death. He's a uh, photographer for, uh, well, he was a photographer for Rolling Stone magazine for 40 years. If you picked up a Nat Geo at any time in the past 50 years, you probably saw his work. But uh, the guy just does amazing work, and he has a real unique perspective on, on teamwork um, and how we can help one another, and I just wanted to share this with you. If you've seen this before, uh, please bear with me, but it's been a minute since I've shared it with, with uh, you know, uh, an audience this big, so I hope you all enjoy this. You know, my very first published photographs were on the pages of the National Geographic. 
I, I still find that hard to believe. I mean, it was crazy, but that's what happened. I was 26 years old, and Bob Gilka, the head of photography at the Geographic, called me back to their headquarters in Washington, D.C. to give me my marching orders. And I remember, I remember standing in the lobby of what they call Explorer's Hall, and I was looking at, at, at giant globes and dog sleds and submersibles and flags planted on Everest and, and surrounded by the most beautiful photographs I'd ever seen in my life. How was I going to prove that I was worthy of working here? And then I was taken upstairs and into Bob's office. Bob, Bob was a blunt man, just straight and to the point, and honestly, a little scary. Well, that morning, I was completely unprepared for what he said to me. He stopped me cold. He, he changed the way I did everything from that day forward. He looked at me from over his desk and he said, you know, DeWitt, the people who photograph for this magazine are the best in the world. You don't have to prove yourself. I don't have to prove myself. I mean, honestly, that's all I've been thinking about since I got the assignment. You don't have to prove yourself, he continued. But by God, every day, you had better improve yourself. The words went in. Don't prove yourself. Improve yourself. Bob was still talking. He said, you know, I want you to spend your time every day trying to be better than you were yesterday. If you learn something that'll help the others, well then share it. That way we'll all get better faster. Don't prove yourself. Improve yourself. Otherwise you're fired. <laughs> Big first lesson. Right out of the blocks. I don't know how many times I've thought about it, how many times I've acted on it since that day in Bob's office. Don't prove yourself, improve yourself. And you know, living that lesson, I've come to see that life really is a lot more about cooperation than it is about competition. It wasn't proving myself or taking others down that allowed me to succeed. It was simply consciously, continuously improving myself refining my skills, honing my wisdom, focusing my vision. Ultimately, the only person I was trying to surpass was me. Don't prove. Improve. Great stuff, huh? So, of course, nobody in this room is getting fired, except maybe me, I don't know. Um, but um, uh, you all do terrific work all year long. Um, if you're doing something that's successful, not only do I want to know about it, but I want to make sure that you're sharing uh, that technique or um, tchotchke or whatever you got going on that seems to uh, have folks responding. Uh, tell other, tell folks about it. Network. Uh, ask for ideas. Um, you know, again, I showed you my information, my direct information. I say that, and I will get a smattering of calls or emails, but not nearly as many as I probably should. Do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I am uh, I'm here for you. If there's anything that I or anybody else at headquarters can do for you, please do not hesitate to reach out. Membership takes the no wrong door approach. If you call me asking a question that I don't know the answer to, I promise I'm gonna get you to the right person, okay? With a warm handoff.